Dr. Nelliman, you've just put out a new report on the gorilla in conjunction with Interpol, uh, the International Police Agency. Why did you call your report the last stand of the gorilla? Well, basically the situation is that we fear that the gorillas may become extinct across large parts of their range within less than 10 to 15 years from now. Now, in 2002, you were the principal author of another study. Was that study perhaps a little more optimistic than the findings of your most recent one? Well, at that time, we considered the findings in 2002 to be very pessimistic, but it appears now that those estimates were too optimistic, in fact. What do you think is the principal reason or some of the reasons that could be driving the gorilla here in Africa into extinction? Well, what we're seeing now is not only an extensive uh, logging and mining in many gorilla habitats, the spreading of the deadly Ebola viruses, but beyond everything, we're seeing a rise in bushmeat and in poaching on the gorillas. To those who are not familiar with the term bushmeat, can you explain that, please? Well, basically, in, in, uh, in these parts of, of Africa, uh, bushmeat is the hunting for wild animals for protein, for food, basic food. Like you, if you buy, uh, buy food in a, in a store, they instead buy food from hunters that get wildlife uh, meat from the bush. So what you're saying, in essence, is people are selling the gorillas basically for their meat. Yes, the, uh, the amount of food being uh, being obtained from the bush now in this actually fairly small region in in the world is comparable to the entire meat market in the whole of the EU or even in, in comparable to parts of the US. Why is this meat market growing so rapidly? What are the reasons behind that, Dr. Nelman? Well, there are two reasons for that. Firstly, population growth, but also uh, the extensive conflict uh, in the region where we're seeing massive illegal extraction of timber and of uh, minerals and these logging camps employ professional hunters that go out in the bush and kill gorillas, chimpanzees and also other wildlife to support the loggers in the camp. People listening to this may well ask, why are so many international agencies including Interpol and, um, and indeed police forces elsewhere just so helpless? What can be done? Let's talk solutions now. Yes, well, we, the fact is that we already know that, like in the Verungas, where the uh, precious mountain gorillas have been, and over 190 rangers have been killed in defending the parks. 190 rangers? 190 rangers within a very small region alone. But in this particular case, uh, they have now managed to protect the mountain gorillas, and they are now rising. They've increased 10% just in the last, uh, last two, three years. So we know that law enforcement uh, does help in this region in spite of the massive conflict. Is there a need for greater public awareness? Can the United Nations Environment Program do something more significant? Can other international agencies do more in this respect? Yes, absolutely. What we desperately need in this region is not only to strengthen the UN peacekeeping forces, but we desperately need more law enforcement and particular investigations of the companies involved in this transnational crime. Are these companies being supported uh, or why aren't these companies being booked if environmental crimes are being committed? Well, up to now it's mainly been a discussion of corporate responsibility and ethics. But what is basically happening is these companies are solicited, solicited not only in environmental crime but also in finance in the conflict that are driving the, uh, the guerrillas to the last stand. Not to mention the hundreds of thousands of people that are being driven into refugee camps. Dr. Nelliman, when you write a report of this scope and this magnitude, certainly there must be some good news in it, or is there none? Well, the most exciting find is that in the middle of this complex zone, we have just discovered the recent find of 750 new gorillas, uh, which is a, a very significant uh, finding. And the most, ex but the most uh, scary find of this is that they're disappearing faster than we can actually serve them. So we also need support to more surveys in the region of these gorillas. Now some of the footage that the United Nations Environment Program has obtained through its field researchers, in particular Dr. Ian Redmond, shows these magnificent uh, animals to be almost two to three times the size of a human being, correct? How big are they? Well, they can, uh, they can be up to a couple of hundred kilograms. Huh? The silverbacks, as we, we call them, the old, old males, are very magnificent. And I think the most important thing also to understand is that even though only a few gorillas are killed, uh, the impact on the gorillas is very, very high due to their social life. 
you can compare it to losing a family member, how much impact that will have on your family from losing a father, losing a mother, or losing a child. For the gorillas, sometimes this can be, have even greater impact because due to their social structure, the way that they live, the way that they've organized, members of a gorilla family will take the other parts of the family to new feeding sites, will bring them around in the jungle. So their, their function and life is perhaps even more impacted than it would be from a family of ours to tragically lose another family member.